<laughs> Hello everyone, and welcome back down here to the Gamer's Den with me, your host, Jordan, your Master of Lore and Storyteller Extraordinaire. And we are going on with the Occultist Spellcasting Guide, taking a look at Conjuration Spells today. And for those of you who maybe just... Uh, joining us and not really know much about the occult spellcasting, here's a few quick things to know. First, you're not a prepared spellcaster, meaning everything that's on your spell list, you can cast it at will anytime as long as you still have the available spell slots. So if, you've ca if you can cast three first level spells in a single day, well, you can cast any of the first level spells that you know. You don't have to study or prepare them ahead of time. You can just fire them all on out, off out there, depending on however many actions you have and how long it takes to actually cast the spells. Second, your spells are tied to your focus. So if you have a conjuration focus, you can cast conjuration spells. And each time you select a conjuration focus, you select one spell for each spell level those spells that you select are tied to that focus. And if you lose that focus, all of those spells are cast at their bare minimum level. So if you're a 12th level spellcaster and you lose a focus and you want to cast the third level spell that you know from that focus, you can only cast it as if you were a third level spellcaster, not a 12th. So losing your focus greatly diminishes your ability to be a spellcaster. The other thing to note is if you've put any mental focus points into that specific conjuration fo uh, focus, that specific implement, then those focus points are also gone with it. They're still there, but you cannot activate any of the focus power. Well, you can't use those points to activate those focus powers uh, that are associated with conjuration unless you have another conjuration implement. So that also diminishes your ability to work as just an occultist, not just even as a spellcaster, but to use your occultist specific focus powers that give you a lot of your really unique abilities. So losing your fo your implements, sorry, I keep saying focus because I'm used to other spellcasters, losing your implements, your conjuration implements, your evocation implements, whichever implements you have, greatly affects the majority of your abilities that are going to allow you to participate in and out of combat. Do not lose your implements. They're too important. But to that end, let's cover the conjuration spells. Coming in at zero level and standing head and shoulders above the other zero level spell we've covered so far, we have Stabilize. Its casting time is a standard action and its range is five feet plus five feet for every two caster levels. The target is one creature, duration is instant, and you target one creature with minus one hit points or less to automatically stabilize the target and keep them from dropping down into negative 10. Really, really solid spell to have. The only drawback I would say there is with it is one that's DM dependent. If you're a really cruel DM, and I recommend you walk that back just a little bit for most situations, You'll let the player fire off the spell, and then when it's the time for the NPCs to act, you'll have three of them start stabbing the target to death and drop them down to negative 10 or less, effectively wasting the character's spell. While I can see some situations where that would come up, with most of your flesh and blood living opponents, once somebody is dropped, they're going to be focusing on the other threats that are still standing. Not that that person can't be a threat, but are you going to waste time leaving yourself open poking the guy on the ground, or are you going to keep your weapon in the way of the people that have just been living chipper shredders and spreading blood, guts, bone, and viscera everywhere and just evaporated people into clouds of steel and pink mist and memories. No, you want to keep your defenses up and focus on them. But, again, just kind of depends on your DM. And for all of you harsher, cruel bastard DMs out there, walk it back just a little bit. If they're going to use this to help an ally, let them go ahead and burn up a zero-level spell just to keep them from dying. Anyways... First level spell is Cure Light Wounds. Standard action, range is touch, target is of course the creature touch, and the duration is instant. You heal 1d8 plus 1 hit points per caster level, maxing out at a plus 5. More importantly, 
being able to cast this, having this on your spell list, means not having to worry about making a use magic device checks when using the Wand of Cure Light Wounds. And I know what some of you viewers out there are thinking, Jordan, you're supposed to be a master of lore. Don't you remember that occultists are masters at using magic devices? You get bonuses for it. You also uh, recommended we take a trait to swap out charisma uh, for the intelligence, which is our best stat. This means we're amazing at using magic devices. And thank you, viewer. You're smart, insightful, and I love your memory. Thank you for paying attention. But there's always the chance that you can roll a one. And when it comes to healing and keeping yourself patched up, especially if you're pushed to a point where you have to do it in a fight and not afterwards, you really want to make sure that you're not taking any chances. So being able to just whip out that wand and hit someone with it, or especially yourself, to keep yourself conscious and alive and fighting, very, very, very important. A very, very useful thing to have, because you, you know, that dying is bad. <laughs> you can quote me on that. Dying is the worst thing you can do with your life. So making sure that you negate that risk of rolling a one is worthwhile enough. Plus, remember, you're not a prepared spellcaster. So even though you might have this on your level one spellcasting list, nothing says you actually have to use this spell. Again, unless it's dire straight. So just having on your uh, having it on your list is great, but you can use any of the other spells that are a more immediate mechanical combat benefit. So with that said, we're going to go on to a spell that is undeniably great and it comes in at second level and it's glitter dust it's a standard action to use range is 100 feet plus 10 feet per level and the target are any creatures or objects within a 10 foot radius spread the duration is one round per level and you coat an area and all creatures within it with gold particles revealing any invisible targets and potentially blinding them though they do get a will save to negate the blindness it's great that this just has an added kicker effect and blinding an opponent as well as negating their the bonuses they get from invisibility is great but you know uh if the blindness doesn't hit fine whatever you still are able to see the target that was invisible that might have been coming up behind you to shank you or the wizard but going on from there we have our third level spell and it's cure serious wounds i'm not a fan of the later cure spells at least from a mechanical standpoint and for the conjuration spell list that the occultist gets this is probably one of the better options particularly for a build where we're not really focusing on really ramping up our spell casting ability it's a standard action to use uh, range is touch target is creature touch and the duration is instant you heal 3d8 plus one hit points per caster level, max is 15. So at minimum, you're healing 18 and maximum is 39. Uh, not a bad range, but for a third level spell, it's not great having that much of a range. I mean, the, you know, the minimum you'll, uh, the average you'll heal is what? One through eight, the average of that is four to five. So we'll say two fours and a five, 13 plus 18. 28 points healed isn't bad, but you can lose that pretty damn fast in a round. And when it comes to using a wand to heal afterwards, Cure Light Wounds is less expensive and is better bang for your buck. Just because that average range of healing there, uh, it's, well, on a per gold basis and all of that and everything, it's definitely better. But if you get a Cure Serious Wounds uh, wand for free... And having this on your spell list and being able to heal afterwards, I mean, that's great and all. That's not bad. And recharging it is definitely still going to be a bit spendy, but eh, not the worst thing in the world. And again, that's just looking at this from a purely mechanical and, you know, cost analysis and mathematical standpoint, which, God, I love and hate math so much. But, you know, you get the idea. Cure Light Wounds is a better bang for your buck as, as a wand, much more effective. Roll with that, but having this in your back pocket is not necessarily a bad thing either. Because as we established, you don't have to use this spell. If it's that dire where you have to use it, well, you've probably got bigger problems like imminent death, doom, and destruction coming your way. So, moving on. Fourth level spell, we have uh, Dimension Door. 
It's a standard action to use. Range is an incredible 400 feet plus 40 feet per level. Target yourself and creatures or objects touched. Duration is, is uh, instantaneous and you allow yourself and targets touch to instantly teleport to any location within range. You can bring one medium sized creature with you per three caster levels. Large creatures count as two medium creatures and so on and so forth as you go up the size chart. Uh, if you arrive inside a solid space, you and each creature traveling take 1d6 damage and are shunted to a random open space within 100 feet. If there isn't an opening, you all take 2d6 and move out to a spot within 1,000 feet. And if there isn't any free space there at all, you take 46 points of damage and the spell fails. And that's 4d6, not 4d6. So, Dimension Door is a great spell. Really great, really handy for teleporting everybody around, getting through different obstacles and the like. Definitely a great one to have. I highly, highly recommend it. But, of course, we have to keep going on from there. Once we cover Dimension Door, we come up to our fifth level spell, and that is Wall of Stone. It's a standard action. Range is 100 feet plus 10 feet per level. And the effect is... You create a stone wall one inch thick uh, for every four caster levels. You may double the wall's area by halving the thickness. This can be made into any shape and must merge and be supported by any existing stone in the area since, you know, you're shaping uh, stone. So this means you can make crenellations, matriculations, all different kinds of defensive features necessary for protecting yourself. You can make bridges with this. You can make steps, stairs, ladders. It just has to be supported by other and connect to other bits of stone. So this is great for putting up all kinds of good fortifications. I mean, being able to throw down a barrier or barriers and create just like a little maze or an air, a way to funnel opponents into a narrow point to maximize the killing effect of any arrows, spells, or whatever else. Funnel all the opponents directly right into that uh, meat grinder you call your, your fighter and paladin. This is absolutely a good spell to have. Really, really good. Also... The fact that uh, you can create this wall of stone, you a lot of people think about creating just something raising up from the ground. Very few people actually think about doing things like creating stuff out of the sides or the ceiling. Dropping things down in such a way that your opponents have to crouch and move all awkward, slowing them down in their movement. That's also very useful. So if you're in a cave or in a castle or some kind of building and fortification that's made mostly out of stone, use this to create some difficult terrain for opponents to move through where they really have to hunker down in awkward kind of ways and uh, make life incredibly difficult for them. Also, using other spells or effects to collapse the walls and get that to drop down on people is great too. But for our sixth and final spell, in Conjuration, we have Heal. Standard action, its range is touch, and target is creature touch, and the duration is instant. Most of the Cure Light Wound spells, or various Cure, you know, Cure Serious, Moderate, all those different kinds of Cure Wound spells, I'm not a fan of. Heal, I am definitely a fan of. You channel positive energy into a creature to heal injury and ends all of the following conditions in the target. Ability damage, blinded, confused, dazed, dazzled, deafened, diseased, exhausted, fatigued, feeble-minded, insanity, nauseated, poisoned, sickened, and stunned. Also, cures 10 damage per level, maxing out at 150 damage when you hit 15th level. So... No variables, no variation on healing there, just guaranteed 10 points of damage healed every time, or for every level. And you remove all of those other ability, uh, d well, abilities, uh, uh, status effects, those ailments, you remove all of those different things from the target. If they're suffering from all of those things, uh, you know, god what the hell happened to you but even if they're suffering from two or three of those and they're missing a ton of hit points this is a great way to slap them get them back up to peak fighting condition and sending them out there to go I and mean, it removes the fact that they are exhausted so if there's been a running battle for you know half hour to an hour whatever 
I mean, some of you might be thinking, I've worked really hard st for an hour straight. Uh, that's not the same as fighting. I mean, I've spent a half an hour in a ring, and that was exhausting. Like, and when I say in a ring, I mean training, you know, four separate opponents, each of them alternating and swapping out every couple of minutes, like 30 second breaks in between each one for a half hour straight. I was dead and throwing up at the end of that. I could barely move. I could just, it was all I could do to cover myself. But, you know, doing that for half an hour, you know, I was done, dead. And so half an hour of fighting in armor with weapons, real life or death with that adrenaline surging. Sure, you can push yourself for a while, but at some point that fatigue, that muscle, those muscle aches that just slow down that happens is going to hit. And you're going to be taking damage over the course of a fight that long. So using this, bam, you're at peak fighting condition again. All that fatigue, all of that damage, all gone. You're ready to go. You're ready to start tearing everything to shreds. And your opponents, if any of them survived encountering you over that half hour before, are going to go, oh, gods, why? So great spell to have, especially, again, for yourself if things are really that dire great for anybody on the front line definitely have it but there's of course more conjuration spells than just this and if you disagree with any point in this list or if you fully agree and want to let me know about it head on down there to the comments section let me know your thoughts let's go ahead and engage in this in the discussion and get the debate going here or if you absolutely hated the video and you don't want to give me a like, go ahead and hit the dislike button anyways and still voice what you didn't like. Rip everything to shreds here and engage in the discussion again. Help me become better and more knowledgeable. It's the best way to do it by talking with more informed, better informed, more experienced minds than I. And also, if you did enjoy today's video, well, good news for you. There are going to be a couple more popping up over here. One is something the all-powerful Google Rhythm has decided that you will enjoy as well. The other one is just another video that I've done recently, but I think it's still going to be fantastic for you. Or, if this has not been your first stop here at the Gamer's Den, well, you must be enjoying something, so go on down there, hit that subscribe button, and become a regular member. Be notified the next time I upload more quality content here to the channel. But, with all that said, I've been your host, Jordan, your Master of Lore and Storyteller Extraordinaire. Thank you all so very much for your time, and you fine folks, you have yourselves a good night.